Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Backpacker Travel Set from Sulkin. And this is a really interesting two bag travel solution. I'm a big fan of one bag travel, but fully recognize that it's not going to be the ideal way to travel for every trip or for every individual. And when you need a little bit more flexibility, this type of system can come in really handy. And so I've been excited to have a chance to test it out over the past couple of weeks. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about what it's been like to use this. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. I will be walking through the day pack and the main pack individually, but I first wanted to talk about how they work together while I have them loaded out. And because I think that's one of the more interesting aspects about the system is the fact that you can combine them into one large travel backpack or use them as two separate bags. And so you do have two different ways that you can attach the smaller day pack portion onto the main pack. The first is the way that I have it here so that you can actually wear them as one large backpack and can tend to feel a little bit bulky when you're wearing it this way as both sections of the bag have a pretty good amount of volume. And the way that you would attach the day pack on right here is that you would use the compression straps of the larger portion to hook into these loops that are present on both sides of the day pack. So they have these durable G hooks here, they slide in very easily, and then you can compress it down and because you have attachment points at four corners, it does end up feeling very secure and stable compared to some of the other systems that I've used in this manner. So I really like how easy it is to get it on and off and the adjustability that this provides. I also like that it doesn't impede the functionality of the main pack. You have external water bottle pockets here that I would still be able to access. I could access the top flap. I wouldn't be able to access the clamshell area that we'll take a closer look at later while I'm wearing the bag like this, but I think it does a good job of allowing you to attach the components without it feeling awkward to use and without you having to worry about the bag falling off. So that is if you wanna wear it like a backpack. If you wanna use it what I call kangaroo style, I believe Chase Reeves also uses a similar terminology, you would be able to put the larger portion on your back and then once you have the bag on the front, you would be able to clip on the smaller portion. And so the straps of the larger section have G hooks that pair with the same loops that we used to attach it the other way. And then you could clip it on and then walk around with the backpack on the front. So that provides maybe a little bit more balance. It doesn't feel as bulky. And you know it does provide access to some of the compartments in the smaller area. And I've used bags like this in the past. They didn't necessarily hook on in the way that this bag does here, but it, it's a system that can work well if you find that you wanna travel with two backpacks. One thing that I didn't notice about using it in this way that was a little bit awkward is actually getting it hooked in because of the orientation of the G hook. So here the hook is horizontal, but the loops have more of a vertical orientation. So when you're actually wearing the bags and trying to hook it on, it took me a little while to actually get it comfortably hooked in and then it wasn't that easy to get on and off. So I would imagine that when I'm traveling, I might actually just use the straps as opposed to hooking it into the actual loops, even though this would maybe feel a little bit more comfortable as far as the weight and you know, just making sure that the bag feels secure as opposed to having these straps that could potentially slide off or bump into these larger straps. Uh, I still think it would be easier to just have it looser because once this is packed out, it's not always easy to kind of lift the hooks up in a way that would allow you to, to easily release it. So a little bit of a trade off there. I still like the ability to attach it in both ways. If I wanted to, I think it's still pretty thoughtful, simple. And I imagine that people will have different preferences with how they wanna carry it, how they want the weight distributed, the amount of access that they'll need. So I really like the flexibility that's provided by the system with how you can kind of hook things together. And then that each of the components of this system works really well on its own. Taking a look at the individual components, I'll start with the main pack first which is the travel pack portion of the system. So it's a little bit larger. This is where you will store your bulkier, larger clothing items. 
And I like the aesthetic of both sections of the system as it's got a little bit more of a heritage and classic vibe. It's a little bit more outdoorsy. It's not overwhelmingly technical. You do have some compression straps, some handles, but it's a look that I think is gonna blend in well into a variety of environments, whether you're in a more urban setting or taking this into the outdoors. As far as the materials, the bag is made out of a recycled yarn that feels like it's gonna hold up well over the longer term to the rigors of travel. Might not offer quite as much weather resistance as you know something like ballistic nylon or X-Pack, uh, but you know it's still a fabric that I think you're gonna be able to beat up quite a bit. There is a rain cover included as well with the bag that you can pull out when you're gonna be caught in heavier rain. It's stored at the bottom. You have this Velcro compartment here and it's fully removable if you don't feel like you're gonna be somewhere where you might run into some weather. But if you are, it's great that that's just thrown in with the bag to give you that protection. And then of course you have some very smooth working YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the main pack, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets and these offer a ton of space. They have a nice amount of elasticity. I was able to easily fit this 24 ounce water bottle from Life Straw. This is a filtered and insulated bottle that I've been using recently. Uh, but this would definitely be able to hold a 26 or 32 ounce bottle, especially when the main area isn't packed out. You do have elasticity, but as these things get bulkier, it does sometimes start to take up some of the space from the main area. Still a good amount of space, nice depth on this compartment. And then I really like that you have these compression straps on the side. They work well for securing the smaller backpack, but also just as compression straps on their own for attaching a tripod, a jacket, or compressing the bag down to kind of help prevent everything from moving around. And you have those on both sides. And then on the front, you have a handle as well as on the top, similar style handle. It's got a durable feeling sort of nylon. It's not super thick, but sturdy enough to be able to just pick the bag up and place this into an overhead storage compartment or into the back of a truck. Besides that, on the front, you have just the Salkin logo here. So at the top and a couple of attachment points at the bottom that could probably pair with some third-party straps if you wanted to attach something to the bottom of the bag, not included with the system that I got a chance to test out. And then taking a look at the capacity for this main section, this comes in at about 45 liters with the ability to expand out to about 55, I believe. And that is a pretty decent amount of space, especially with a bag like this that doesn't have a really rigid form factor. So you can really stuff this out with a ton of things and it never feels like it's overwhelmingly big or quite as big as it should feel for the amount of stuff that you're placing on the inside. Of course, if you attach the day pack portion, it will start to stick out and feel quite bulky, but just this section on its own as a travel backpack compares well to the other similarly sized bags that I've used. It can hold more than enough for a couple of weeks of travel or even longer. And it never feels so bulky that I would be uncomfortable just walking around the city with this, taking this into the outdoors or jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the harness system, this is an area where the bag does really well in my opinion. It's been super comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have plenty of padding. It's really comfortable and thick easy to wear right out of the box. On the inside, it has this breathable fabric to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. Then you have load lifters at the top that are gonna allow you to pull the weight closer to you when the bag is a little bit more packed out. They also have this nice curve that really just feels great around your shoulders. And you also have the ability to adjust the shoulder straps to fit your particular body height, which is something that you know we've seen in bags from Tortuga, which I've been a big fan of. It's great to be able to just configure it and really match up with the way that you wanna wear it so that you feel really comfortable. On the shoulder straps, you also have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight, and this also has a safety whistle. And then taking a look at the back paneling, this has also felt great. You have a similar type of padding to what we saw on the straps. Same breathable fabric on here and the padding is well distributed all throughout. You also have some elevation here to create these air channels and give you a little bit more ventilation while you're walking around. 
And then at the bottom, you also have a very robust waist belt that's gonna be great for taking the weight off of your shoulders. This is well integrated into the bag, but you also have the ability to remove it if you don't wanna use it. And this offers plenty of padding. This is the type of waist belt that I might actually see myself using, particularly with the bag of this size. It's got similar level of padding to what we saw in the straps and on the back panel, breathability, nice level of adjustability and you know it's well integrated so it really does feel like it's going to help distribute that weight off your shoulders and then you also have some pockets that are going to be great for holding some of the quicker access items that you might want to grab like some snacks your phone maybe a portable charger or something like that and then the last things I'll mention while we're on the back is that you have this hidden zippered pocket here that's gonna be a great spot for storing something that's a little bit more sensitive as it's resting against your back. So this might be a good spot to place your passport, maybe a wallet or some extra cash to keep it a little bit more hidden from pickpockets. And then on the side, which I forgot to call out earlier, you have an additional handle that's gonna allow you to carry this when you don't wanna wear this on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty simple for the main pack. At the top, you have a quick access pocket on the flap, which does offer a pretty good amount of space. You know, it kind of takes up the majority of the top section here. And this is gonna be great for any items that you need to grab a little bit more quickly. It also has a soft fleece lining on the inside to help prevent against scratching. So this is a perfect spot for some sunglasses if you don't have a case, your phone, a GoPro, I also just have some smaller items here such as a little manicure set that I typically have with me and then a little sewing kit that I've been trying out as of late. So really like the amount of space that's offered here and the added protection from the liner. And then moving into the main section, you're able to access this in two different ways. It does have a clamshell kind of duffel opening along the front so that you can pack it out like a regular you know, travel backpack. And you also have this top section here, which is secured with these G-hooks. So a lot of G-hooks throughout this bag. And this actually is what allows it to expand, I believe 10 additional liters. So you have this drawstring opening at the top. And the system that they use here is pretty interesting. It has this tab, which we'll see on the day pack as well. You just pull on it and it's a very quick system. So I really like the implementation there and you can see the additional volume that you get if you are carrying a ton of stuff or if you're going to be traveling for a longer period of time you can access whatever you need to from the top for me of course i prefer to access and organize the bag via this front clamshell opening and you can see here that because the bag isn't rigid if you don't have it fully packed out things can tend to start sliding around this is what i would typically carry for a couple of weeks of travel I have plenty of leftover space if I wanted to throw in another packing cube or a bulkier pair of shoes. So that's the nice thing about having the flexibility here. And so I'll dive into the current setup that I have, which is using the packing cubes that I've used across most of my travel bag videos. But the company does actually have their own set of packing cubes, which they sent for me to test out. They're pretty good in general. They work well with the bag, they're durable, and you know, they're simple packing cubes. So if you just need a set to kind of organize your stuff, it's gonna work out well. They also have a laundry bag that's great for storing your dirty clothes. It has a taped seam. So you can roll it up and secure it so that the smells and you know all the dirtiness can stay away from the rest of the items in the bag. There's also the ability to hook that into the bag itself to kind of keep it from sliding around. So really nice, thoughtful sort of ecosystem of accessories around the bag. But diving into the ones that I typically use, I've been testing out the Peak Design ones for several months now. I have the smaller compressible Peak Design packing cube in here. And then I have the larger one as well and both of those fit in there very, very easily. And then I also tossed in my Air Adopt kit and I have a packable rain jacket. And so with those items in there, again, there was plenty of leftover space, pretty simple layout here. I like that there are built-in pockets along the sides that have some good volume. So this is gonna be almost like additional packing cubes you can use to store your socks, and your underwear or other accessories that don't fit into the rest of the bag that you don't need to access as regularly. So this could be your toiletries area, tack area. You have two on each side. I don't tend to use these type of pockets too much because I use 
a modular style of packing. And then on the other side, you have a larger compartment. So really just love the variety of organization here. This one might be a good spot for a towel or a jacket that you roll up, or again, just other clothing that you wanna keep separate or easily accessible. And then on the back of this section, you actually have a laptop sleeve that has a little Velcro flap to help secure it. And this sleeve offers a good amount of padding, and it also has a soft fleece lining to help preventing and scratching. It's suspended off the bottom of the ground, so it kind of checks off all the boxes that I would typically be looking for. This would definitely be able to hold a 15 inch laptop if you needed it to. And it's interesting to have a laptop sleeve in this larger section of the bag. I think it makes sense if you only want to travel with this one and use a different packable day bag. Or also if you want to keep the weight of everything that you're carrying closer to your back, you might want to toss in your laptop into this section and then, you know, not put it in the day pack. And then once you arrive at your destination, swap them out. If you put it into this section, it might get a little bit annoying if you're going through TSA and you have to reach in around all of your stuff and get it to put onto the conveyor belt while you're going through security. So that's something you'll need to keep in mind. But in general, with the amount of padding and the fact that it's suspended and the fleece lining, it's a great implementation if this is the way that you might find yourself having to carry your laptop. And in general, really just love the simplicity of the layout in this main area, the pockets that are included and the amount of space. And whether you choose to get both bags or not, if you're just looking for a spacious and comfortable one bag travel option, the main pack itself is gonna be a really great option to take a look at. Taking a look at the day pack, there's a lot of similarities here as far as the aesthetic and the material. So it's got that same kind of heritage and outdoorsy vibe without feeling overwhelmingly technical. So there's not a ton of straps on the exterior or anything like that. Just a really simple look that I would definitely find myself using even if I wasn't you know, carrying the whole system with me. I really like the appearance. And then the materials, same recycled yarn on the exterior. Not as many zippers on this bag here, but the zippers that it has. RYKK, so just really durable build quality all throughout. On the outside, you do have two external water bottle pockets, which is always nice to see. These have a nice amount of elasticity. They're a little bit smaller than the ones that were on the larger portion, of course, but I could still fit that same 24 to 26 ounce uh, water bottle. Anything thicker than that on this smaller portion I think would be a little bit too tight. You can also see that it's not able to go all the way down even with this size here. So something to keep in mind but it's enough space for the water bottles that I would typically carry with me or for other items like an umbrella or maybe a tripod that I might want to carry. And then I like that because they have that elasticity when they're not in use they just kind of pulled close against the bag. And then moving into the capacity, the date pack comes in at about 20 liters, which is a really great daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold most of the items that I would normally be carrying with me on a day to day. And I like that the bag has a little bit of a slimmer form factor, which makes it great for integrating with the larger travel backpack, but also for when you're just carrying this around, it's going to be great for navigating crowded areas, jumping on a public transit, or even using as a personal item on a flight to put under your seat. Taking a look at the harness system, like the main pack, this has also been quite comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. The padding isn't quite as thick or robust as the larger portion, but that makes sense for the size of bag that this portion actually is. There's still plenty of padding on the inside. You have that same breathable mesh. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. You have some attachment points and webbing here on the straps, and you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight, and this also has a little safety whistle on it. As far as the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. Plenty of padding that's well distributed all throughout the back. Lots of breathability as far as the fabric. And then you also have some air channels here to provide you with a little bit of ventilation and airflow while you're walking around. While we're on the back, I'll also call out that you have a hydration bladder pass-through here if you wanna use this as a hiking backpack. It's nice that you can actually place the nozzle through there to be able to stay hydrated while you're on the go. And then you also have Another hidden compartment here that rests against your back that's gonna be great for sensitive items like your wallet, your passport. If you wanna keep them a little bit safer from pickpockets, good amount of space here. And in this compartment, you also have a little lanyard with a carabiner that's gonna be a good spot to attach your keys or maybe a smaller multi-tool. 
Jumping into the organizational options, again, keeping things pretty simple here, you have a quick access pocket on the top flap. Like the one on the main compartment, it has a soft fleece lining to help prevent scratching. Good amount of space here. It doesn't go all the way down. It's got about the length of my fingertips here, but still enough volume even when it's secured down to hold even some bulkier items like a GoPro, which is what I currently have here. And then I also had a lightning cable to charge my phone, maybe a good spot to toss in um, your keys, some sunglasses, or even your phone while going through TSA. The last thing I wanna call out before jumping into the main area is that you do have the ability to access the laptop sleeve from the outside. You have this large vertical zipper that will allow you to reach in and grab it without opening up the top flap. So it's gonna be a little bit easier if you're going through security or if you're just working somewhere and you wanna to get to it quickly. This is again gonna be able to hold up to a 15 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Currently what I have here is a 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see there's some leftover space here at the top. I'd imagine a 15 inch might get a little bit tight if you have this really cinched down, but in general, still some room there. Plenty of padding here on the back and on the sleeve itself. And really like the fleece lining to prevent against scratching. The bottom here, unfortunately, isn't really suspended off the bottom of the ground. There is some padding at the bottom, so it feels like your laptop is protected if you place your bag down but I like that the main portion of the bag that we looked at earlier, the sleeve was actually pulled up a little bit to give you just that extra peace of mind. So I would have liked to have seen that here, but still a good amount of protection and pulling my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. Soft lining on both sides of the compartment, which is nice to see. Comes up a decent amount, so if you happen to have a thicker device, you should be able to fit in there comfortably. And again, with the amount of padding that's offered here, even though it's not necessarily pulled up, it still feels like your device is gonna be well protected while you're running around throughout the day. And then moving into the main compartment, this is a top loading bag. The flap is secured with this nice G hook here that is adjustable. So you have some flexibility as far as the volume and the capacity. If it's a little bit of a lighter day, you can cinch it down to just have a more compact form factor. If you need to carry a little bit more, you can expand it up. You can also rest a jacket or other items here and secure it down. That's one of the things that I always really like about top loaders like this. It's also kind of nice that you have this little pocket here where you can tuck the strap in to just prevent everything from flapping around. So really thoughtful design overall. And I like that this G hook is, you know, it feels really durable. Don't have to deal with any zippers or anything like that. And then at the top, you have the same sort of drawstring opening that we saw on the main portion. So it has the system again that you pull up to release it can pull up on the drawstring. I hadn't really seen this before, but so far, once you get used to it, it's actually really quick to close this and open this up. And then pretty simple bucket of space here that can hold a lot of stuff. It's great, particularly if you uh, like modular packing, if you use a lot of pouches, because there's not a ton of organization here. And so diving into the items that I currently have here, first up at the top, I have the alpaca admin pouch that has some EDC items. And then I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, one liter. And behind that and below that I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones always great for a flight as they're noise canceling but I don't always carry them with a travel backpack because they take up a lot of space but with the extra capacity from the two bag system that's the type of thing you might be able to carry and then the last thing that I have here at the bottom is my Evergood Civic Access pouch two liters so Really just wanted to kind of toss in a few different pouches to show the capacity. I wouldn't necessarily carry all of these for a trip per se, but it's nice that you have the ability to do so and a lot of flexibility because of the simple layout of this bag. And even though it's a more compact 20 liter bag with the amount of space that's offered here, you could even use this as a mini uh, travel bag. If you have your larger bag, but then you're taking like a small weekend trip at your destination, you could toss in a packing cube, a dop kit, maybe an extra pair of shoes, and you'd be able to get away with using this as a, as a minimal travel bag. And on the back here, the last thing I'll mention is that you do have a little bit of organization. You have a zippered pocket here that might be a little bit tough to see. You have the orange interior on the back, not, not for the whole compartment. Some of the bag has the green exterior, same as the uh, outside of the bag, but the back here does have that brighter lining and you have one just simple zippered pocket here that's gonna be a good spot for any smaller items that you don't want getting lost. 
In my case, I actually use this to store the laptop charger for my device. And then on the inside here, you have another lanyard with a plastic loop and clip that is gonna be another good spot to secure some keys uh, that you wanna be able to grab without having to worry about it getting lost. And then on the back, you have access to the laptop compartment. And so we already looked at this earlier, but now you can get a better look at the sleeve and just the level of thickness here. This really is a nice amount of padding. That's what makes it feel like your laptop is really gonna be safe. You have that on both sides. And one thing to note, I showed earlier the pass-through for the nozzle. It's interesting that this has the soft lining as you don't always see that when you place a hydration bladder, this area might get a little bit wet. So something to think about. I don't really use hydration bladders that much. I would use this more as a tech bag than a hiking bag, but I like that they tried to give you the flexibility to use it for both. But yeah, so pretty simple layout overall in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag, but I like that they focused on checking off some of the key features that any good day pack would have as far as the water bottle pocket, a comfortable harness system, the laptop. And so you don't have to make a compromise uh, as far as kind of a secondary bag that you're taking with you on a trip, like you might have to with some of the really packable soft bags that don't always offer the same amount of comfort or protection as something like this. So really just great system. Both portions of the, the travel system, the day pack, the main pack work quite well on their own, but it's awesome that you can combine them together, have something that is designed to work as one. And if you're looking for a system that's gonna give you a little bit more flexibility for longer term travel, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the backpacker set over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase these on the company site starting at around $120 for the day pack, $250 for the main pack, and then if you buy them as a bundle, they come in at around $350. So definitely a bit of an investment. It's pretty premium pricing, but you are getting some really high quality accessories that combine into a very unique travel system and are also gonna compare well against other similar premium travel bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first thing this reminded me of is the Ozone Duplex travel system that I looked at from Osprey a little while back. That was another two bag setup that had a day bag and a main kind of travel bag that were meant to hook together. And you know, that was a pretty interesting experience to test that out. It was able to hold a pretty similar amount. The day pack was around 20 liters. The travel section was 40 to 45 liters. The difference there was um, in how the harness systems were managed the travel section of that bag didn't actually have its own independent harness. You hooked it onto the day pack and that actually had the majority of the padding and had the waist belt and then the other section could be held as like a duffel bag if you needed to. So I really like that this one actually has a super robust harness on the travel portion itself and then that the day pack does. So it feels like you have a little bit more flexibility and allows each section to work better independently, but it also feels like it offers a little bit more support, um, especially when everything is loaded out. With that being said, Osprey makes some really durable bags and that system was really high quality. It worked well. The day pack portion was a little bit slimmer, felt like it had you know good laptop protection. You couldn't remove the waist belt on that, which I didn't like. But you know, for some people that want to have that for their hiking or just any sort of activities that they might be doing, it might be a nice thing. The Osprey system also had some more kind of modern fabrics that offered maybe a little bit more weather resistance, might also feel slightly lighter, particularly without having that dual harness system. So if you're looking for something kind of like this, it's gonna offer a two-in-one solution that's gonna be maybe a little lighter and that might be slightly lower in cost and that's gonna be a really solid option to take a look at. The next bags these made me think of are some of the expandable options from NAC. I'm a big fan of the Series 1 and Series 2 expandable NAC packs. They're really versatile bags and they're a nice alternative to the 2-in-1 travel system because they have the ability to expand out into a large travel bag to hold all of your stuff while you're in transit, but then they can compress down to a more EDC friendly size when you arrive. So it's a little bit simpler. It's not going to be quite as robust as this. It's not going to give you the same level of flexibility or space, but it can be a little bit easier if you don't wanna actually take two bags, but you wanna have some of the benefits. I'm a big fan of all of the NACs that I've tried out. The Series 2 is still maybe the one that I like the most, just as far as the aesthetic and the organizational layout. And you know, the comfort on that is not gonna be quite the same as these bags here. But you know, again, striking a good balance between something that's good enough for while you're on the road, maybe not for walking around for hours on end or for going into the outdoors, but those bags also offer a more professional aesthetic 
really nice organizational layout. And again, if you're looking for something that's not, you know, a bag that you want to live out of, that's just going to give you some additional space and flexibility and look good while doing it. And that's going to be a really great option to take a look at. And then while we're talking about two bag travel setups, the last option that I'll mention here is the level eight rolling suitcase that I reviewed pretty recently. There's been a few trips as of late where it's been super helpful to actually take a more traditional carry on suitcase that I could roll around and pair with any sort of a day bag that I might want for that particular trip. And the level eight suitcase has been great as far as offering just a really high quality suitcase. It's pretty lightweight. I love how smooth the wheels work. It comes in at a size that I've been able to carry on to a variety of domestic and international airlines without any issues. It has a built-in lock to give you just that extra peace of mind. It opens up flat, so it has the dual compartment so I can easily lay all of my stuff out. It actually has a compartment on the front for your laptop. If you wanted to travel with just one bag or maybe a smaller sling bag, it's good that it does provide that extra organization. I tend to use a proper day pack when I travel with that bag, but still, Really nice flexibility, and if you're somebody who doesn't want to actually carry a backpack and save some weight on your back, and you prefer to just have something that you can roll around that's going to be reliable and durable, then that's going to be a really great option to take a look at. With that being said, the Sulkin Backpacker System holds up really well against all those options, and I've definitely been impressed with how well each of these items works individually. I think that they combine really well, but to me that doesn't really matter if one of these doesn't work on its own, so they did a really great job with that tons of comfort and durability here and if you're looking for just a reliable long-term travel set that's going to give you a ton of flexibility then this is going to be a fantastic option to check out and i'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the salkin backpacker set and how it compares to some of the other travel systems that are currently on the market and if there's any similar options that you think i should check out as always please let me know in the comments and I want to thank the company for sending the bags for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.